In this section, I'm going to teach about the, the social teaching of the Catholic Church in regard to the destination of goods. The Church calls it the universal destination of goods. Um, so, to start with, we we have the the right to own things, um, especially because it serves the economy and ownership of things creates a certain stability in our lives. However, we should not hoard things, and we should regard things as if we are just stewards of these things, uh, um, rather than owners, and, and in a way seeing them as owned uh, by everybody. So here's, here's a quote from the Catechism. In his use of things, man should regard the external goods he legitimately owns not merely as, as exclusive to himself, but common to others also, in the sense that they can benefit others as well as himself. Okay, so this, this brings us to a con concept called um, uh, being poor in spirit. Um, I'm going to read this. This is the first of the Beatitudes from Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So, what what does it mean to be poor in spirit? So, well, let's analyze this. Um, actual poverty is not having physical wealth. But being poor in spirit is living as if you are in actual poverty. So, someone who is a billionaire can still be poor in spirit if the person doesn't live like a billionaire. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, would you get angry if somebody accidentally dented your car? Why would you get angry? Isn't the person more important than the car? So if you are truly poor in spirit, you would not get angry. Um, because the car, in a way, you're just a steward of the car, and it belongs to everybody, in a way. Um, you would loan the car out to that same person if that person needed it. Um, so that's what being poor in spirit is about. Um, another question that comes up uh, when talking about the universal destination of goods is... Um, is it just for the government to take money from the rich and give it to the poor? Um, and I have another question for you. Is it just if an economy makes it difficult for the poor um, to rise in the economic ladder? If they're like economic, if the economy that you live in has economic barriers to the poor to be able to rise up, is that just? Well, no, that's not just. So if you live in that kind of economy, then it is just for the government to take money from the rich and give it to the poor because in a way it's owed to the poor because of the economic barriers. Um, although that's not the only reason the government um, might want to do that. Uh, the government um, could also do it for good reason in order to smooth the wealth gap for the sake of the economy. This does not mean, however, that you know everyone should have an equal amount of money. It's also good for the economy that s some are more wealthy than others because sometimes there are um, innovative projects that need to be started that, that need a large starting capital in order to start. So the next um, point I want to make is um, that we, we as individuals um, have an obligation to help those in need, uh, but we need to be smart about it. Um, we don't want um, to give money that gets used for uh, bad uh, purposes. Um, if if you say walk, are walking down the street and you meet a homeless person begging for money, um, if you feel compelled by the Spirit, by grace, to give money to the poor, that poor person directly, then then by all means do so, but otherwise you should favor giving money directly to charity organizations instead. Um, while there is a little bit of an overhead, as long as there's only a little bit, they do have the ability, they are in a uh, better position to make that money work for good and, and not get misused. Um, if somebody asks for uh, food, give them food, not money. If somebody asks for a job, give them a job 
not free money. Um, it's more dignified for a person to make money from doing work than to just receive free money. Um, so I'm going to finish up by uh, reading this. Um, this is a parable from Jesus about the, the rich man and Lazarus. There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld he was in torment. He raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side, and he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warm them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they per be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. So about this, one thing I want you to note is that Jesus did not give a name to the rich man, but the poor man had a name. And this, this strikes in contrast with um, what the world does, right? The world knows the names of rich people, but the world can see poor people as, as no names. Uh, but Jesus, we can see where his heart lies is with the poor. So um, considering all of this, remember to follow the command of Jesus to be poor in spirit. May God bless you.